welcome back to this series where we are being encouraged to live as people in our world today who are reconnecting with our families our neighborhoods and friendships all as a direct result of having the joy of our salvation restored within us what we've seen so far in the series is that the salvation we receive from god is truly about eternal life but it also carries with it his purpose of filling our daily lives with all the good things he has in store for us right now along the way we've been reminded that just as nothing about us and our lives is beyond the reach of god's love and the salvation he has brought to us through his son jesus christ so it is that there's no good thing god withholds from those whose faith and trust is placed in him previously we looked at how the joy of king david's salvation was impacting his own personal life but how it was also giving him a heart for others in his time remember from psalm 36 that david writes about the priceless nature of god's unfailing love and the truth of god's unlimited blessings poured out upon him but we also see in that psalm his personal joy leading him to have vision for other people taking refuge in the shadow of god's wings the joy that he has gives him eyes to see others feasting in the abundance of god's house and drinking from the river of delights that flows out from god in the last two sessions we thought about some of the wonderful impacts on us of god's loving mercy and grace and as a reminder to that let me just read what paul says to titus in chapter 3 verse 4 where he says when god our savior revealed his kindness and love he saved us not because of the righteous things we had done but because of his mercy he washed away our sins giving us a new birth and new life through the holy spirit he generously poured out the spirit upon us through jesus christ our savior because of his grace he made us right in his sight and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life we have been saved there's no list of things left for us to do god's salvation has covered everything we have had all our guilt and shame washed away we have been born into new lives we didn't have relationship with god as our father but now he has come to make his home in us through his holy spirit and his grace or his desire for us as we heard a couple of weeks ago is all sufficient in bringing us into right relationship with him and provides us with the confidence of eternal life with jesus isn't that good so moving on to today let's continue to add to this list of the joys of our salvation which god has brought to us but before we do that let's just check back in on the questions we are asking ourselves in this series the first is are you and me living as people who are grabbing hold of these joys the second question that we might ask ourselves is is the joy of our salvation actually bringing about change in my heart and in my mind and in my outlook and vision and is my relationships with others going through that same change because i've got this greater joy in my heart because of god's salvation so those are the kind of questions that we that we keep on want to ask ourselves as we go through this series but today maybe just to help us find good answers to those questions let's get into the next part of the series and as we do let's just pray and trust that god will help us to rediscover the joy there is for all of us and for all of those we are connected with through the gospel of forgiveness 
Back in the Psalms, again, David says this in Psalm 32. Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. You know, David wrote this psalm as someone who really did know that he needed to be forgiven for the times when he'd gone wrong in his life. And I, you know, I guess that during most of our lifetimes there will be moments where we are also in need of someone's forgiveness. You know, it might be that we forgot to do something or remember something important. It may be that we actually hurt someone emotionally or physically. Sometimes things happen which are completely accidental and not intended, but for which we also need to come back and say sorry for that and look for forgiveness. And, and really, really in, in many such occasions, those that we have hurt or injured or upset in some way, they will have the ability or will clearly and openly forgive us. And in those moments, we have been gladly able to get back into good relationships with them. But, you know, even in the best of restored human relationships, there, there can be those brief moments where we feel again something of the guilt or the sense of failure that piled into our hearts and minds during times when a relationship was stretched or even broken. I think that, you know, obviously there could be lots of reasons for why this happens, but it, it may be we get these feelings cropping up because we find it difficult to really trust the forgiveness that someone spoke over us or show, showed to us. Sometimes we find it difficult to forgive other people for something that's happened in our lives, and so we have a nagging doubt that others may be also able to forgive us. But whatever the causes of us being unable to either fully accept or fully give forgiveness, the results can lead us into a joyless sort of life where perhaps we have feelings of inadequacy or we become more easily aggrieved by other people's mistakes and shortcomings. If we are struggling, though, with forgiveness in our natural lives, we can also find ourselves being persuaded to allow this kind of thinking to get into our Christian lives. We can start feeling that God too might not have forgiven us quite as much as we thought he would. Or we get fooled into feeling that there are some things in our lives that are unforgivable and therefore there remain open questions on our record sheet. But what God really wants us to see and understand today is that those thoughts and the self-condemnation that often goes with them are just not compatible with the new life that God gives to us through Christ. In many ways, it's just like trying to force those square pegs into round holes. The task itself has got frustration and disappointment written all over it. You know, David found this out, and, and I think he talks about it as he continues in Psalm 32, verses 3 to 5. And he says there that when I refused to confess my sin, my body wasted away and I groaned all day long. The square peg would not go into the round hole. Day and night, your hand of discipline was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat. Finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. I stopped trying to get the square peg into the round hole. And I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord. David says, and you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. Stop trying to fit the square peg in the round hole. And in a nutshell, this is what God's forgiveness is like. When we stop trying to do that, 
God is willing and ready to completely accept our confession and remove all our guilt forever. And isn't isn't that something to be joyful about today? So I want to leave you with God's faithful words to you and um, words that are, are aimed at restoring joy to your salvation through his gospel of forgiveness. The first word to us is this, that you have no debts outstanding. In Ephesians 1 verse 7, the writer says, Paul writes, He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his Son and forgave our sins. The purchase of our freedom has not been paid lightly. And that price is such that it was able to forgive all our sins. All our sins. You have no debt outstanding. The second thing is that you can never be reconnected with your sins. Psalm 103 verse 12 says that he, God, has removed our sins as far as the east is from the west nothing can reconnect you to those sins nothing because the forgiveness that god has given to you has removed them as far as east is from west no matter how far west you want to travel you will not catch up with your sins no matter how east you want to travel you will not catch up with your sins it is impossible God has done that through his forgiveness. The third word I want you to take away is that you have been made perfect. Ephesians 1 verse 4 that says, Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. When you come to Christ, holiness and faultlessness is what God gives to you. Because he forgives you in Christ, the one whose blood was shed. You have been made perfect. The fourth point is this. You are a child of God. Ephesians 1 verse 5 says, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do and it gave him great pleasure you are in his family you can never be unfamily you can never be outside of that family god god god's forgiveness has brought you to be his child fifth point is this that you live in a new kingdom in colossians chapter 1 verse 13 paul says he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. You live in a new kingdom and you can never go back. You've been transferred. You've been brought from darkness into light, into the kingdom of his dear son. And the, third, the sixth point, the last point is this. You have it all guaranteed. Ephesians 1 verse 13 to 14 says that God identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. It's all guaranteed. It's rock solid. God has done this through his gospel of forgiveness hallelujah let's praise him let's praise him with joyfulness in our hearts god's forgiveness no longer holds a threat of backtracking god can never go back on all that he has promised god's forgiveness doesn't begin when we become good people it begins when we're as far from god as we could ever be it begins with him being there to forgive us and bring us back to himself in love God's forgiveness 
is ours to enjoy. It is filled with all the joy that God has brought to us. And there's so much more to come. Amen. So as we close today, let's just take time to reflect and pray together. Let's take the moments ahead to allow God, by his spirit, to breathe freshness into our lives. Let's pray that prayer of David again, asking God to restore to me the joy of my salvation. Father God, we ask you in the name of Jesus, fill me again with that real sense of joy in the salvation that you have brought to me. Breathe fresh life into that. Let those embers glow bright again as you breathe a, your breath upon them. That I might be filled today with that real joy in the forgiveness that you have given to me. I ask in Jesus' name. And in the quietness now, just perhaps allow God to minister to you as you consider one or two of the, the questions that we think about for ourselves. Thinking, you know, maybe about yourself and, and asking, is the joy of God's complete forgiveness something that you want to know in your life? Maybe you've not known it before, but maybe you want to know that now. In this quiet moment, invite Jesus to come into your life. Ask him to wash away all your sins and give you his forgiveness, which is forever. Perhaps you're thinking that the fullness of the joy of your salvation has become dulled by life itself. Here and now, just take time to respond to God who invites you to have his joy restored into your heart and soul. Maybe there are specific areas of your life where you really want that joy of your salvation to bring change. Maybe in a relationship, it might be in your outlook and vision might be just you know the the way that you approach each day you need the joy of your salvation to bring some change so in this moment of prayer just ask god to fill your heart and your mind fill that outlook and that vision with joy as he restores again the joy of your salvation through his forgiveness Maybe there are people in your life that you need to forgive. Take a moment to ask Father God to restore your confidence and your joy in his forgiveness. And then ask him to help you to forgive and to share his joy with those people. Father God, help us as we pray through these questions and think about what you want to do in our lives and help us now to be willing to let you bring that joy into our lives, we pray in Jesus' name. The Apostle Peter writes in his first letter, Peter chapter 1 verse 9 the reward for trusting Jesus will be the salvation of your souls and just before that in verse 8 he writes that though you don't see Jesus right now you trust him and because of that trust you are able to rejoice with a glorious inexpressible joy May that be true of us all today, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and thank you for listening. 
may the joy of his forgiveness the joy of his salvation fill your life and touch the lives of others for jesus sake